For tonight's sportscast, WFMI News 2 selects Patrick Wright. Here we go. All right. It's you. Me? It's you. Me. All right. Congratulations. All right. All right. Thank you, thank you. Turns out I'm not the only one getting drafted tonight. Millions of eyes were on Philadelphia for the first round of this year's NFL Draft. Well, there aren't many cases where you can use the word never in sports. In the NFL, the Browns, Lions, Texans, and Jags, they've never been to a Super Bowl. The Nationals and Mariners have never made the World Series. And in college basketball, the Clemson Tigers have never won a game in Chapel Hill. Before tonight, they were 0 for 58 against the Tar Heels in Chapel Hill, but a strong start for this year's Tigers had some wondering if the streak might come to an end. Let's find out if it did. The Tar Heels, they got off to a fast start in the first half. Joel Berry finds Kenny Williams there, who knocks down the three. Then some nice ball movement. Theo Pinson hits Luke May for the two-handed slam. Well, a win this weekend would make A&T football 9-0 to start the season. And honestly, folks, I'd love to show you a file from the last time this happened, but I can't. It's because it has never happened. The Aggies are looking to become the first A&T team ever to start 9-0, and I would hate to be the team standing in their way. Well, the Aggies, they missed the Celebration Bowl last season after winning it all just two seasons ago. You could tell these guys were hungry to feel the joy of a championship once again. So with just over 90 seconds left in the game, they strapped their helmets a little bit tighter and fought for a game-winning touchdown. Now they're back on top of the HBCU football world and they've got a feeling that no one can take away. All season long, the Carolina Tar Heels had to listen to people talk about last year, the shot that broke Tar Heel Nation's heart. Well, tonight they had a chance to give them something else to talk about. All it would take is a win over Gonzaga in tonight's national championship game. There are some strong North Carolina ties in this year's NBA draft. Just take a look at all these players coming from right here in the Tar Heel State. But when you've got all this top talent coming from one place, the question becomes, who goes first? All right, all this speed got me inspired today, so I decided to dust off the tennis shoes and hit the track out at Aggie Stadium. Now the challenge, beat the 9.93 Mark Belcher set in the prelims earlier this week. So here we go. Take a look at this. Don't laugh at me. I, I thought, you know, things were, they felt good early on. Then I got about halfway through and you look up and you're like, you still got halfway to go. I, I lost all my breath, but I kept going and take a look. Here we go in three, two, one, right about 15 seconds. So my takeaway is I'm only six seconds slower than Mr. Belcher. After battling to 11 straight wins, the only thing that would determine the real success of A&T season was an hour on a football field in Atlanta. We've been working since the spring, starting this spring ball in, in March. Working up to this point. The Aggies played Grambling State to a draw for the first 58 minutes. Then came the time to prove who wanted it more. As I told the team on the last drive, this is how championships are won. With one minute, 42 seconds left on the clock, the Aggies remembered the pain and frustration of not being here just a year ago. That's when they decided they weren't going home empty handed. So we worked for all year. We had to just, it came down to one, if it came down to one drive, do what you got to do to win, then we had to do it. And we said, man, we're going to draw the ball and we're going to score, man. You know, we've been through so much this whole year. Quarterback Lamar Rainer fought across the goal line for the game winning score with 38 seconds left on the clock. And after falling just short of something so special a year ago, the Aggies now have something no one can ever take away. See, I'm crying. I don't even cry. It's the greatest feeling in the world. 12 and 0. After the game, head coach Rod Broadway said he might be happiest for his senior class. That class won 40 career games, which is the most in A&T football history. Just one of the many honors this group earned this year, including the most important of them all, a national title. Reporting in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Patrick Wright, WFMY News 2. As the sun rises over Greensboro, Garrett Hall is already on a football field. I don't wake up at 4 a.m. for no reason. I don't get hit the practice field at 7 a.m. for no reason. I don't go 100% for no reason. But to truly understand his reason, we'll have to look to his past. And it wasn't just a sport to me. It's kind of a way of an escape of life. And my senior year, I started getting a lot of looks. Garrett graduated from Southwestern Randolph High School in 2012. Then he left home for Matthews, North Carolina, to play a semester of football at prep school. 
at schools like NC State, Coastal Carolina, checking me out at the time. My thoughts originally, I was like, man, I'm going to try to get as many D1 offers as I can, <laughs> honestly. But prep school was also more than 70 miles away from home. Just something in the back of my head um, made me feel uneasy. Um, I thought it was just the fact that he was not going to be at home. And then later, um, I think the reason I felt uneasy is because maybe I knew something was coming. In a sea of flashing lights on a neighborhood street, three teens lay shot. July 15th, 2012, the day that changed everything. We were all hanging out in my apartment, and a teammate came over and told us about a party. Garrett and a few teammates ended up at a house in Charlotte. We stayed in there for about two to three, maybe five minutes, and we noticed that we really didn't want to be there. So they left, but not before the person who invited them stopped to talk in the driveway. And we stood there for maybe two or three minutes talking to him, and then um, we were just talking to him, and then I heard a scream. Garrett found himself in a crowd, rushing away from the house as gunshots flew through the air. One teenager died that night, but two others were shot. Garrett quickly realized he was one of them. I took three steps. I remember specifically three steps, and my leg gave out. I fell to the ground. I dove on the road, and I crawled across the road on my hands and my stomach. <sighs> on my hands and my stomach, and I got to the other side of the road, and there was a girl there, and I said, hey, can you help me? And she said no, and took off running. Garrett was alone in an unfamiliar place with only his thoughts. I just looked down. I thought I was going to die. I didn't know what to think. Um, I'm very religious. I cried out to God, praying to save my life. Please don't let it happen to me. Eventually, help arrived. The nurses in the back of the ambulance were freaking out. And I asked one of the guys, I said, I looked at him and said, please don't let me die. And he looked and he paused with like a, like a sad face. And he said, I'm going to do my best. And at that point, I thought all hope was gone. I thought I was going to die in that ambulance. Garrett needed surgery on his leg. Doctors told him he might not walk, let alone play football ever again. But as he laid there in his hospital bed, he decided this wasn't the end. I didn't want to let my parents down. So for the next year, Garrett rehabbed. Not only to get back on the football field, but to prove everyone wrong. He got better and tried to walk on at Liberty University. There wasn't a spot for him, but still, he kept fighting for a second chance. And one day, something changed. Garrett's mom sent his story to the 700 Club. After it aired, a family friend sent um, Garrett's football link to the coach at Greensboro College. And Garrett got a call. Greg Crum, the Greensboro College head coach, wanted him on his team. There was a lot of things about Garrett that made me want him here. Number one, he's just a great kid. He's a high character guy. I cried. I'll be honest with you, I told my mom, I went in the next room and I cried and I told her that a coach wanted me to play for him. And I broke down like a little baby. Crum didn't even know Garrett's backstory when he signed him. For him to bounce back and be here today, number one is a blessing. Uh, but number two, to be able to play the sport that he loves as hard as he plays it is amazing. Now at 23 years old, Garrett's a junior in the classroom and a freshman on the field. It's an accomplishment. Every Saturday, putting on an actual jersey for an actual team. He proudly wears his number 14 each weekend for the Pride, and it's because all this is about more than a scholarship. Five years later, you know, everything that everybody said, you will never play again. The doctor said it was physically impossible. I did it, and all that hard work I put in finally paid off. Before, Garrett Hall's reason for getting back on the field, practicing at dawn, and giving everything he had was for the love of the game. But today, that reason's changed. Through my story and through what happened, I just want people that have gone through or are going through a tough time in life, whether it's you got shot, you just got out of a bad relationship, you're not doing too good in school, you lost a job, divorce, whatever the situation is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how light it is, you can get through it. And for Garrett, it's about taking life one tackle at a time.